Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in any private tutoring sessions, please feel free to email me at the address listed on the screen. In part A of our question, we have to find the angle that the incline makes with the horizontal. And in order for us to do that, we have to draw a free body diagram that shows all of the forces that are acting on that toy that's suspended from the ceiling of the car. So we'll scoot down here and what we're going to do is draw a tilted axis. We have our Y axis here and our X axis there. We've shown the roof of the car to give us some sort of visual perspective of what's going on here. And then hanging perpendicularly from the roof of the car is this little toy. Now it is hanging from a string. The question notes that the string is going to remain perpendicular to the ceiling of the car. So this angle right here is going to be 90 degrees. So is this angle here, of course, between the Y and X axis. We're going to label this force the tension. Basically the string is pulling on the toy. And we also have the gravitational force which pulls the toy straight down. We will label this force MG. And that would actually suffice to show the two forces that are acting on the toy as the car kind of accelerates down the hill. Importantly, the angle that we're seeking is also going to be represented over here. And some students can't quite see that. And I'd like to just show us where that angle comes from. Perhaps the best way to visualize that angle is to kind of extend our MG a little bit right there. And what happens is we form a nice right triangle right here. Now, of course, in a right triangle, we know that this angle here would be 90 degrees. And then the angle in this corner right here would have to be 90 degrees minus theta. If that's a little perplexing, what you could do is just add theta, 90 minus theta, and then 90. And if you added those together, the thetas would actually cancel. The 90s would add to 180, and that would be the total number of degrees in a right triangle. So that red angle is 90 minus theta. That means that this angle right here is going to be theta. Now, again, how do we know that? Well, we know that the y and the x axis make a nice 90 degree angle. So like right there would be your 90 degree angle. If you add 90 minus theta to theta, the thetas would cancel and lo and behold, you would get the 90 degree angle. So that's just a short visualization of why we can confidently assert that this angle right here is also going to be theta. Now, after drawing the free body diagram, what we need to do is examine the forces that are acting along the X direction, and then later we're gonna examine the forces that are acting along the Y direction. Let's begin with the X direction, and what we're basically doing is applying Newton's second law. Now, Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces that are acting along the X direction is going to equal the mass of the toy multiplied by the acceleration in the X direction. Now, in order for us to do the sum of the forces in the x direction, we have to look at the mg force very carefully because you will see that if you write the components of the mg force, you would have the y component pointing down the negative y axis, and then you have this x component right here. Basically, you form a right triangle with the mg force. So this is a right angle right here. Now, the x component is right here. We may wish to call this mg with a subscript x. We need to come up with an expression for that using some basic trigonometry. So here we go. We could look at that right triangle, and hopefully we could see that the sine of our angle theta is going to equal the side opposite of theta, which is this x component of mg, divided by the hypotenuse of our right triangle, which is mg. Now, if you multiply both sides of this equation by mg, you can cancel out the mg's on the right-hand side, and that shows you that the x component of gravity is mg sine theta. So that force right there is a force that is acting in the x direction. And then in fact, ask yourself, are there any other forces acting in the x direction? And the answer is no, there's only that one force. So we're gonna go down to our Newton's second law, and for the sum of the forces in the x direction, it's just going to be the x component of gravity, and we just showed that that is equal to mg times the sine of theta. And then on the other side, we have this equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now this is kind of interesting because if you look carefully, you could divide both sides of this equation by the mass, m, which will cancel the masses out so now we have a 
simpler equation, we have g times the sine of the angle, which is what we're looking for, is equal to the acceleration in the x direction. Now, we're trying to find that theta, as noted, so we could actually divide both sides by g. Now we have that the sine of the angle is equal to the acceleration along the x direction divided by g. Now, we do know g. This is a known value here close to the surface of Earth. It's about 9.8 meters per second squared. But what we don't yet know is the acceleration along the x direction. So this actually will be necessary to figure out in order to get the angle theta. Now, we were told some important information. We were told that it starts from rest, and therefore the initial velocity would be zero. We also know, if we go back up to the question, that it took six seconds to reach a final speed of 30 meters per second. So we know that the time is six seconds and that the final velocity or speed we could say is 30 meters per second. This information will definitely help us figure out the acceleration in the x direction. How so? Well, we know that the acceleration is a change in velocity divided by time. So what we could say is it's delta V over T. And the change in velocity is simply the 30 meters per second because the initial was zero and the final was 30. So that's a change of 30. And then the time interval was that six seconds. Now, if you divide those out, you're going to get an acceleration along the x direction of five meters per second squared. So now we can return back to our equation for the angle. We're going to be plugging in that acceleration and we'll also plug in the value of g. We will omit the units because they're going to cancel anyways. Now, to solve for theta, you actually need to do the inverse sign here. So basically, you can kind of take the inverse sign on the left side and the inverse sign on the right side. The inverse sign and the sign will cancel out. This gives us the fact that theta will equal the inverse sign of 5 over 9.8. And if we punch that into your calculator, making sure that your calculator is set to degree mode, you will get an angle of about 30.7 degrees. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. We can go up and look at part B. Part B wants the tension in the string. So in order for us to get the tension in the string, we're going to have to apply Newton's second law in the y direction. So let's just clear out a little bit of room here. And we're going to write down Newton's second law in the, in the y direction. So the sum of the forces acting in the y direction will equal the mass multiplied by the acceleration in the y direction. Now, there are two forces acting in the y direction. Hopefully you can see that the tension force is pointing along the positive y direction. And then we have the y component of gravity acting also along the y-axis in the negative direction. So this is sort of mg y component. We need to use some trigonometry again to get that value. So let's go ahead and do that. We can look at that right triangle and we can see that the cosine of our angle is equal to the adjacent side, which is the y component of mg, divided by the hypotenuse, which is mg. You multiply both sides of that by mg, just like we did before. They cancel out, and you can see that the y component of gravity is mg cosine theta. Note again that it's pointing in the negative y axis. So when we go and do the sum of the forces in the y direction, we're going to have two of them. We're going to have the positive tension, positive because it's pointing up the positive y axis, and then minus the mg times cosine theta. And then this will equal the mass of the toy multiplied by its acceleration in the y direction. We kind of boxed ourselves in here, so let's just clear this out. And note that the toy is actually not accelerating along the y direction. It's not accelerating up towards the ceiling of the car. It's not accelerating down towards the floor of the car. It's not accelerating at all in the y direction. So in fact, on the right side, we're going to have the mass multiplied by zero, which of course is just zero. So the entire right-hand side is equal to zero. And then we have the left side, so tension minus mg cosine theta. To solve for tension, you would add the mg cosine theta to both sides of the equation. They would cancel out on the left side, and you would have mg cosine theta over here. Now we just have to plug in the known values. The mass was given. It was 0.1 kilograms. Of course, g is the 9.8 meters per second squared. And then theta, we determined in part A. We will recall that the theta was 30.7 degrees. So it's kind of nice to see how part A helps us find part B. We can now plug this into our calculator, and when we do so, we get a tension of roughly 0.84 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part B. 
Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but please don't feel obligated.